We are in the midst of a climate crisis and we have no choice. We must find a solution to this crisis and we must find it now. The challenge is that this is a crisis we have created. We have a responsibility and if we want to solve the crisis, we must take this responsibility and act. In Danger Shade, we are aware of our responsibility and we want to do something about it. We want to reduce our current and future emissions and we want to ensure that we support a sustainable and green development. As a development and humanitarian NGO, we have done a lot of good things through history. We have saved lives, cleared mines, provided support to communities in their efforts to build resilience, growth and development. However, we are also aware that we have been part of a development path where our activities have led to emissions. Thus, all the good things we have done have also contributed to a climate crisis we are now experiencing. We cannot turn back time, but we can still do something. And we will now turn the past into action. Danchachaid was created in 1922, and we have now existed for 100 years. We have made an assessment of our activities and related emissions, and we have now a good estimate of our historic climate responsibility. It is of course not an exact analysis and, and we do not claim to make a full compensation. That is not possible. People are already suffering the effects of climate change and we cannot fully compensate what has already happened. There are also emissions we have not been able to trace. For example, emissions related to production of goods we have purchased. However, based on the data we have, and based on the emission factors we have found, we have made an estimate. And we will now plant 280,000 trees and support local communities with the efforts to tackle climate change. We have a responsibility, and it's better to do something than to do nothing. We want to turn the past into action. There is no agreed method for how to count historic emissions and uh, we will not claim to have the perfect approach. However, we hope our experiences can give inspiration and contribute to the debate about how to tackle the climate crisis. Two principles have guided us through the research. Firstly, a rough estimate is better than no estimate. It is better to take responsibility for some emissions than to not take responsibility at all. Secondly, if we are in doubt, choose the high emission scenario. It is better to take a big responsibility than to take a small responsibility. When we began our assessment, we looked back in history. Over time, our activities have changed and this has had an impact. During a period we used as a method to help people in need. Airlifts were an effective way to reach those who needed help, but the big aircrafts led to high emissions. In Denmark, we opened the first second-hand store in 1972, and today we have more than 100 stores around the country. The stores are important for the green transition, as they reduce consumption of new goods. Uh, however, the shops are also use energy for heating and electricity, leading to CO2 emissions. In 1999, we began to clear mines in post-conflict areas. These activities have saved many lives, but they have also generated carbon dioxide emissions from diesel generators and transport. For each activity, we have identified data which can be related to the emissions. As an example, we know the size of our offices and the annual turnover. For recent years, data improved and we know how much energy we have used and emission from flights. The next step was to find ways to estimate emissions over time. This was done through the identification of emission calculation methods. As an example, we have uh, recent data about car uh, CO2 emissions from country offices. Emissions will of course differ depending on the size of the office and the number of staff. However, we can assume that it is at least to some extent linked to the annual turnover of the office. And this data is available back in time. But our estimate would be wrong if we just assume that emissions have been similar over time. 
technology uh, have developed, and especially after the oil crisis in the 1970s, energy efficiency began to have a big effect on emissions. We have relied on official energy efficiency factors to ensure that our estimate is adjusted accordingly. While cars, office equipment and airplanes have become more efficient over time, there has also been changes in the carbon intensity of electricity and heating. When the wind blows in Denmark today, 100% of the electricity is renewable. But decades ago, electricity came from coal power. The energy mix makes a difference, and that has also been considered in our estimate. Finally, when data gathering and calculations were done, we still had an important task to do. We know that some data, especially from decades ago, is uncertain. We also know that many of our calculations are based on assumptions, which may not be entirely correct. Our second principle says that it's better to take a too big responsibility than to take a too small responsibility. We have therefore added an uncertainty factor to our emissions, acknowledging that our estimate may be too low. After our assessment, we have learned a lot. We were reminded about the history of Danchel Shade, but we also learned about the emissions our activities have generated. Danchel Shade is not unique. We have been part of a development path most countries in the world have followed. This exercise has thus been a good reminder about the effect our past have on the climate crisis we see today. But as I said from the start, we have a climate crisis and we must find solutions. We must, must turn the past into action. In Danschertschade, we, we are doing this through a combined effort, including tree planting and support to adaptation and efforts to address climate-induced loss and damage in communities most affected by climate change. What is your historic responsibility? And what can you do to take action? We face a climate crisis and it's time to do something about it.